Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Grunt Edge, the show where we talk about the most interesting decks to play around with in this meta. And uh, this time, we're looking at a very, very special deck, an Araka Swarm deck that was created by one of my fellow team members, uh, Trusky. So, Trusky was responsible for the creation of this particular deck, the deck that we now call the Crimson Infestation deck. This is a slight variation on it, but I only changed about two cards, so uh, nothing to write home about. But it's very, very, very powerful. It's great in long rounds and can be even more powerful in short rounds. You can go up to 40, 50 points in short rounds as well with this by basically spamming a lot of points on the board. This is as point slammy as a deck gets, but instead of doing it with very high powered units, we're going very wide, very quickly. So uh, let's go through the cards one by one so you have an idea of what we're playing with, and then we'll go into an example match showing you the best tactics while using this deck. It's not that difficult to pilot, but uh, Let's go through the cards. So first up, I gotta thank Trusky for this. There's a squirrel in this deck. So uh, deploy, banish a card from your opponent's graveyard can be used for echo card removal on your opponent's part or even removing Ceres from the graveyard or stuff like that. Just very powerful uh, as a four provision bronze, but of course, very situational as well. Then double natural selection damage unit by four and spawn drones for the excess amount of damage that you've uh, dealt. So you can gain some extra drones out of that or just take out something that is for power. Arakas Nest is where the archetype of this deck comes out a little bit. So Arakas Nest, you spawn four drones in an allied row, and because of our leader ability, the Arakas Swarm, you get another one on top of that. So with our leader ability, this is five drones. So very quickly, we're gaining that swarm. Uh, this is one of the changes I did. Um, it depends on what you want. Uh, so the original deck has, instead of an Andrega Larva, has the... The Wild Hunt Bruisers so are definitely an option to just move a unit to the other row. When you're faced with something like Northern Realms with the Witchers, you can easily move the Griffin Witcher from one row to the other, so it becomes useful, useless. Uh, so this is a, a real good counter against that. But again, we don't have the Frost, so we don't have the extra damage, so that's why I just changed it to an Andrega Larva, which gives you two units, so again, adding to that Swarm. The Wild Hunt Riders are also in this deck, just a good way of thinning your deck. Then a double Chimera. Chimera is very, very strong in this deck. So on deploy, you consume an allied unit. And when you have four cards or less uh, in your hand left, you boost all copies of the consumed unit on that row by one. Of course, in this deck, that's going to be the drones. You're going to be consuming one of the drones and then every single one of them will be boosted by one, the remaining one. So that can go up to eight points on top of the five for Chimera itself. So giving you 13 points if you can maximize this, which you often can. This Chimera goes for at least 10 points in this deck almost every single time. An Agrafar Taskmaster, of course, they have a Purify in this deck. And then the other organic card that is very, very interesting in this deck is Spontaneous Evolution. So you boost an allied unit by four. And in our case, I don't need to go over the other effects because there's only one effect that you'll be triggering. Uh, if you do it on an Insectoid, you also spawn three more drones on that same row. And you get another one because of Arica Swarm. So this gives you four drones and a four point boost. So every single time there's going to be eight points very powerful, especially if you start with an Arakas Nest and then a Spontaneous Evolution, you uh, get nine units on the board in one, uh, well, in two turns, which is uh, about as quickly as this is gonna go. Dorgare is also in this deck, so six power um, and just a simple lock, another way to counter your opponent's tactics. Um, then we have Parasites, of course, another simple six damage hit, also giving you an extra drone because it is an organic card. Um, since we're swarming, Bone Talisman can't be uh, omitted from this deck either, so boosts all allied units by one, just very powerful on a big swarm. Whispers Tribute gives you the option to pull an organic card from your deck, um, just a very good tutor for the organic cards, especially for the most powerful one we're still about to talk about. Um, and then we have the Arakas Behemoth, so we're getting into the gold cards here. Um, this big boy spawns two drones on this own row and then boosts all other insectoids, so except for him, not the, the other two drones that he spawns, he will boost as well, but he boosts all other insectoids in that row by one. So he can boost an entire row if you set this up correctly. So for example, with an Arakas Nest, you get five drones, you may want to use your Arakas Swarm ability to add another one, giving you six, and then you can put Arakas Behemoth on that row and it's filled completely. 
Um, then the other change that I did originally, this was Knickers. Very good option as well if you want to have some extra thinning in this deck, making it a little more uh, consistent. But I like to go with Goliath anyway, it's a 10 point for 8. Um, and it's just a good way to uh, have that one single unit on the board if you still have one tiny space left and uh, slam those 10 extra points on the board. Then Doldulok. Doldulok is actually very interesting in this deck as well. So you're always going to be using that or almost always going to be using this to spawn a Chimera. Again, we talked about that. But then the Order ability gives you two extra drones, especially powerful in this deck, and then uh, puts the highest power unit that is still in your deck on the top of your deck. So be careful when you use this facing a Nilfgaardian deck. So try to do that on a pass round or something like that. So you definitely don't lose out on that high power card. And then, of course, my girl, my girl, Yennefer of Vengerberg gives you a boatload of points in this deck. So if you put her on the range row, you boost all other units on the field by two. That includes your opponent's units, but again, weakens Swarm very, very quickly. Most of your other opponents will not be able to do so unless we're going against like Congregates or um, Squirtle Elves. Uh, those might be able to uh, catch up to you. But uh, other than that, there's not a single deck that can swarm as quickly as this. Um, so very powerful. If you're facing a mirror, you can also use Yennefer as a counter by putting on the melee though. If your opponent has a large swarm and you don't have anything anymore, you can just damage all other units by two. But usually they're going for the ranged option. Now we have Crimson Curse. Um, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really happy about this. The fact that this card has finally found its way in a very powerful meta deck. Um, it has been changed quite recently, so it now spawns the Blood Moon on an enemy row for five turns, and then spawns two Akimaras in the opposite row. So the Akimaras have been boosted to three power from two before, and the Blood Moon still has the effect that it applies bleeding for two turns to a random unit on that row. If that unit is already bleeding, then it deals two damage instead. So very powerful. Possibly, but of course, the points can go a bit wildly out of control if you uh, if this if you get unlucky. Basically, it depends on your uh, matchup there. But still, it could be 16 points. Usually, goes for a good 10 or more. Um, so definitely something to keep an eye out for. And again, it's an organic card, so you get another drone for that as well. Kurati Heatwave again, very good counter against scenario cards or big power units. Trist Telekinesis basically allows you to. Um, I would go for either another Arika's Nest, not that powerful, Spontaneous Evolution, a little bit better if you need it, or of course if you play this at the very very end and you get lucky to get the option, the Bone Talisman. Playing this at the very end might very well just put you over and give you the match, because could be very powerful with another Bone Talisman on top of the one that you already have. And then of course on Aeromancy for consistency, allowing you to pull uh, two cards from your deck uh, spread out over two rounds. Um, we talked about the leader ability um, just a little bit already, but every time you play an organic card, you spawn a drone on a random allied row, and with the order ability, you have five charges to place drones wherever you want. So that is the deck. We're gonna just point slam the heck out of somebody. Come join me in the example match. And we're facing Skellige, but with the Battle Trance ability. So that actually gives us a good chance to win here. So we'll see how it works out, but looks like we're already getting some juicy, juicy spawning, swarming cards. Uh, we got Yennefer, we got Triss, and we got both of our love interests in hand already. Uh, the Purify is gonna have to wait until later, I think. I'm gonna get rid of the Purify for now. We get Crimson Curse, that's something you can actually use rather early if you want to. We have double removal. Uh, so let's just get rid of the four provision one and we get the Riders. Okay, so the Riders we want to of course get rid of. So as long as our opponent doesn't play a high powered card, yeah, Crow Mother is absolutely fine. We can banish it. But I think the four power you're getting out of that, that was that was a very nice opening play. 14 points. Blam. Um, let's just start slow with the Wild Hunt Riders. Doesn't look like we'll be able to use Yennefer properly in this first round. So we're going to have to wait with that until the last round, most likely. And that's our opponent tries to push, but should be fine for now. And we get a Chrome Messenger, so again, 8 points with another double beast on the board. 
Um, you know what? I could actually try and just use the Crimson Curse now. We're gonna get full points out of that. And we get some nice tempo as well. So we get the weather effect. They're gonna start bleeding out. And we got the two extra units on our side of the field. And we get our first drone as well. The first drone of the match. The first of many. We get a bunch more crows as well. But again, we don't really mind. Uh, I'm not going to use Yennefer in this round, but what I do like to do, especially with Spontaneous Evolution in our hand, I spawn one Arakas drone on the empty row because I don't want to keep filling that top row. Uh, and then we use Spontaneous Evolution on that one Arakas drone that's alone, and then we can spread out on both rows just a little bit. Especially since we have Arakas Behemoth on in our hand as well, we want to just be able to use that to its full advantage. As you can see, even though our opponent started really, really strongly, there we go, we get bleeding out on our opponent's field already. Um, don't want to really overplay here now. We won't be getting an extra point out of this, so might as well just spend a Chimera. We have two more ways to get Chimeras, uh, so I don't really mind basically wasting that one Chimera. So let's just do this. That's going to add more bleeding and lose our opponent two more turns. Well, two more points. And then we can just pass. Now against this type of Skellig deck, it's hard to kind of guess whether you should push or not. I think we're going to. Um, because I'm probably going to be able to swarm quicker on a short final round if that comes to that. Um, we should probably get a little bit of removal. We get a lock. We get an aeromancy, which is also very good. Uh, so let's get rid of that and we get swarming in turn. So well, that's that's fine. There we go. And we go first. So of course we're going to start by swarming. There we go. There we, there we go. Game. Thank you. Okay. There we go. Five Arakas drones. So you want to try and think about what your opponent can do before actually putting down your Arakas drones. For example, against a Squirtel movement deck, you don't want to put too many on the top row. Um, because, of course, that would risk you... Hmm. I don't have Quirati Heatwave at the moment. I just kind of cut myself off there. But if they want to use Gedaneath now, that is going to be a nice bleed from my end. I could just use the swarm and then get it over with. I could actually do that. Let's just uh, play on Aeromancy. Um, play uh, Wispus. And then get another swarm on the bottom row. So that gives us almost two full rows in one go. And I just want to get ahead of my opponent really quickly and then just pass. Because if they're going with... Okay, they're going with this Fall Blood Priest combo. So now I'm gonna just... Um, am I gonna push this? Yeah, I'm gonna push this. So let's just put down... How many do is that now? So that's 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, yeah, we can add another one. The next round is going to be pretty long as well. So I want to be sure that I actually... I'm actually going to use all but one of them. So there we go. Let's just put Yennefer down right here. Be to pick and that gives us uh, 16.45. So that is uh, a 29 point lead. Just pretty good. We get the German shield main, there's only gonna be two of them. And then, with 20 points ahead, I'm gonna pass. So this should get us into card advantage, or our opponent is gonna have to burn their leader ability. I don't see them outputting 20 points in one go just with a single card. And they don't, so they're gonna use their leader ability on the Draco Turtle. That is pretty okay, so that's gonna be just enough, I think. That's gonna be 12. That was... That was actually pretty close. 
So we lost the rounds, but we're still at equal cards and our opponent has completely used up their leader ability. So that was a pretty good bleed, if I can say so myself. Even if we pull Squirrel now, we could still get rid of the Chrome Modic, so even Squirrel would be 8 points. We get the Korati Heat Wave now. The Defender is gone unless it gets revived. What else do we still have left that we can pull with on Aeomancy? Doldu Lock. Nah, but at that point, we're probably best off just using the Chimera. I think this is actually pretty fine. The only thing we're really lacking, again, is just more swarming options. But I could use on Aeromancy to do that, so I'm just gonna, just gonna say that's okay. Okay. So we used up Yennefer while we had the benefits, and our opponent is definitely also capable of swarming a lot, so we're not gonna give them the chance to do that. Uh, we still have, I think, yeah, we still have two of the natural selection cards. So if we really need to, I can use on Aramancy as removal as well. Especially thinking we're getting a, a lot of druids on the field. And we start with a Twistax Skirmisher. Okay, that was probably not what I wanted to pull. And then we get the Andrega Larva. That goes on the back row. I should have maybe put that on the front row. Although, yeah, I only have one more card that I really need to play on the ranged row. So that is fine. We're gonna be waiting to see. We still have three, maybe four removal options. So I think that we have the upper hand here. Because even though this deck is focused on a lot of swarming, gaining points really quickly, there's also a lot of removal options regardless. Um, that also kind of fit into that swarming option because of Arca Swarm you're also getting the drones every time you use parasites, natural selection, stuff like that. So yeah. Trusky did a really good job with this deck. And we get Ganonite. Of course we get Ganonite. And of course that's what we kept the Korati Heatwave for. Just denying our opponent so many points by doing this. It's just gone because the defender was wasted in the previous round. So bleeding with this deck is also very important because it can be so useful. They lost their leader ability, they lost their defender, they even lost Sarah's on crate because the... Yeah. Oh, they're gonna use it like that, okay. So... I'm gonna lock it. I'm gonna lock the Queen's card. Yeah, that's gonna probably be the best thing to do here. So let's lock the Queen's card. We still have time to swarm wherever the hell we want to, so feels fine. We still have one or two more drones that we're going to get from organic cards. Yeah, I think we're doing pretty well for ourselves. So that's lock and we get Grammys, okay. But... That still gives us one turn in which nothing happens. Hmm... That is going to be four points every time they're able to damage that. But how often are they able to damage this now? They could very well damage it a few more times. Um, I wanted to use the Chimera instead. I'm going to do a risky thing. I'm going to use Triss now. If I get a natural selection, all the better. Yeah, okay, we get a natural selection. Is Swarming going to be better? No, Swarming is not going to be better in this case. So let's just use natural selection and take out that Queen's card once and for all. I passed. There we go. I passed. And now we get... Oh, the Draco Turtle has been revived. And of course we lost the... Um, we lost the lock as well. But of course Kramist could have healed that off. Do we have anything in the deck that, that can take that out? I should have banished it with the squirrel. Although... Anything could have been removed there. Um, the Gamera itself is not going to be much. We could do this. And then put the Atakal's Behemoth right next to it. That will just boost them all. And we got one point extra. But right now it seems like our opponent has the upper hand just a little bit with the Draco Turtle. Potentially, because I can't take it out anymore. I still have Parasites if the plan is to put a Priest right next to it. Um, which might very well be the case. And that gives us another drone. This is going to be tight. Depends on the amount of alchemy cards that I still have left. That is going to be, yeah, Ermion. Is that going to go right on top of that? Yeah. So that's going to be 12 points. Oh no, a resurrection for the priests. A resurrection for the priests, but I'm going to take that out. 
That is way too powerful now. That's three points every turn, so I'm just gonna take that out with a Parasite. And that fills up our back row. And kind of removes the engines over there. I'm guessing they're gonna get a lot of Murderums as well. There we go. So that's 12 points. 13 points because of the extra point they're getting on the uh, the, cloak the Crow Clan Preacher. Um, yeah, next up, we don't really have another choice. Let's play uh, Dolduloc. Let's play Dolduloc. And Dolduloc is, as I said, gonna be a Chimera. We play the Chimera over here and eat one of the drones. That gives us also. A very nice batch of points, we lost two points on that run, so that gave us 11 points based on what our opponent did. That's too bad that I don't have that cruelty anymore, but again, get an eat would have been more points, I think. It's usually the bigger option. I still have 10 points and then the swarm, so that's going to be 12 because of the Andrega larva. The question is, is there another surprise in that deck? I feel like they've spent most of their gold cards. We get a Giga Scorpion Decoction that's going to take out one unit over there. Now the question is, is their last card a tall removal card or not? It might very well be Coralty Heatwave. And if I do that... Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to use the Bone Talisman first. That's only one point in difference, but if our opponent has Karate Heatwave, that's going to save us three points. So now we're ahead. We have 10 more points. Uh, 12 more points, because the Andrega Larva. And now we're getting... Karate Heatwave. Yes! Yes! Call it! So that's just taking out that uh, six-pointer, but uh, nevertheless... Nevertheless, we took that win. There we go. With Goliath even. So my uh, tiny, tiny adjustment of the deck for, uh, kind of paid off. And that's the power of the Swarm. So as you saw in that second round, uh, there's a very, very good option here to just boost yourself up really, really quickly in that second round, forcing your opponent to overspend too much and then just setting up for that final round and taking it very, very closely, I might call like this. So uh, yeah, let's check the deck out one more time. So again, all the props for this deck go to Trusky, uh, our uh, Team Elderblood team member that just is responsible for this amazing deck. I mean, uh, if I can pilot this deck into a win, into a lot of wins by now, uh, actually, then it is a very, very good deck. Uh, because I'm not a pro player, those guys are the pro players, but I just uh, like to entertain everybody with uh, some very nice example matches using these decks. Um, so, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, this is one more time the deck list. You can also check out the deck list and a very, very detailed description of the deck, how to use it, what the matchups are on our meta snapshots. You can check that out as well. The link is down there in the description. And of course, this deck is at the very top of it because uh, I think we're pretty unique uh, in the uh, meta snapshot scene with that because this deck is at the very top of it, the Crimson Infestation deck. So with that said, I'd like to thank Trusky one more time for his amazing deck. That was just, it's a its a pleasure to be playing this. And I'm very honored that I could bring this for our team as well. Because this is going to be added to the snapshot as a very a little demonstration of this very powerful deck. So thank you guys. It's normalcy for watching. Let me know what you think of this deck. Let me know in the comment section. Let's discuss what you think of this deck. Because it's one of a kind. Uh, it's going to be popping up a lot all over the place in the... Uh, and, and on the ladder, on Pro, it's going to be everywhere. Um, again, this deck has some counters, of course. If you're facing Skellige with a lot of damage pings, you might be in trouble. If you're facing movement, that's going to also counter this deck rather hard because of the amount of uh, white punish that decks like that can perform. Uh, but other than that, all the, all the other matchups, aside from maybe Witches, of course, because who beats Witches, um, are very, very favorable. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this deck guide of mine, and uh, see you guys in the next episode of Gwanchets. Thanks for watching, and stay nutty. Goodbye. Yeah,